Watch out, kid. Get out of the way. and the jockey sticks on it and crosses the finish line first, it wins. Oh, hold on there. Hold on there. Hold on. According to them rules, my horse won. He never found nobody. Then he crossed the finish line showing his butt to your black. <laughs> no, sir. That's what happened. No, sir. The finish line just runs across the track from this rail to that rail, and it don't just keep going down into Mississippi. Because if it did that, if it did that, this horse has been crossing there since sun up this morning, and we ain't even heard of him. That's right, and he's right. Our horse was first under the wire, and where I come from, Mister First Wind. Now you just settle down, Ed. You're the judge. You say how it is, and that's how it is. Please, 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 please. The question is, what's fair? I propose that we start fresh. All but stand, nobody won, nobody lost. Win this next heat and win all, and I'll get ready for the next race. You can do it. Good luck, Lucius. You upset, kid? He gave me only hand. I don't think he's good anymore. He'll go again. His only aim in life is to get where I am and get what I got. What do you got? Something. He's a dope, because you'll put us right back in jail again. No, it ain't dope. What's in the sack, Ned? It's just a sardine. A what? Smelly little old fish about two inches long. That's all it is. Don't lie to me, Ned. Horses don't eat sardines. Well, this one does. He'd eat himself to death on him if you let him. He'd break his legs, bust his lungs, run his heart out for him. I guess that ain't so smart. Then again, if he was smart, He'd be up in the saddle riding, wouldn't he? <laughs> All right, we're ready. Bring your horse to the line. Hey, go get him. on the back of lightning, racing on a jet black shape. It took me completely. Blood, skin, bowels, bones, and memory. I was no longer held fast on Earth, but free, fluid, part of the air and the sun, running my first race, a man-sized race with people, grown people, more people than I could remember at one time before watching me run it. And so I had my moment of glory, that brief, fleeting glory which of itself cannot last. But while it does, is the best game of all.
Please let me down. It's all right. Well, never mind. We can talk about it later. I can see you're busy now. And so we all went home. Lightning in a boxcar, and the rest of us in the Winton Flyer. We turned up the street toward home, and I thought, here's something funny. It hasn't even changed. I couldn't understand why everything was the same when I wasn't the same anymore. If all the things I'd seen and done had changed nothing, if nothing was smaller or or older or wiser, then the last four days had been wasted. Either they'd been wrong and false to begin with, or I was wrong and false and not worthy of them. I couldn't figure out which. I suppose this is the main thing you'll always remember about me. Over here. good enough for him. He gets the notion that that razor strap cancels out all the deceit and disobedience. And you're making it too easy for both of you. Same thing you had done to me 25 years ago. Maybe I got more sense now. Go upstairs and persuade Allison to stop sniveling. Well, you had a lively four days. What was it like? What did you do? You want to hear everything? Whatever you care to tell me. We went to Mr. Binford's place. I am acquainted with Mr. Binford's place. They've got some very nice ladies there. You spent the night? Corey put me to bed. Who would Corey be? She's a friend of Boone's. She got to be my friend, too. And then? The next bed I slept in was Uncle Possum's. He's an old man, like you, only colored. 
Maybe say my prayers. Commendable. I guess I'll have to say a lot of them from now on. Mm-hmm. Why is that? <laughs> I've been telling lies. Yes, I am aware of that. Whoppers. I know. Come here. I can't. Why not? Because you're a liar? Yes, sir. Because you're afraid I won't ever trust you again? That I don't consider you reliable? That I've lost my respect for you? Is that it? Yes, sir. It's a heavy burden to carry, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, you may have to live with that feeling. For the rest of my life? No, but for a while. <laughs> I can't, Pop. Yes, you can. You will. Gentlemen can live through anything. Gentleman accepts the responsibilities of his actions. Bears the burden of their consequences. Even when he himself did not instigate them, but only acquiesced to them. Didn't say no, though he knew he should have. Now come here. My face was against his stiff collar in his shirt, and I could smell him. The starch, and the shaving lotion, and the chewing tobacco. And finally, that faint smell of whiskey from the toddy, which he took in bed every morning before he got up. There, there. Must have emptied the cistern. <laughs> now I'll go wash your face. A gentleman cries too, but he always washes his face. <laughs> Get you out of the doghouse, Lucius. One of these days, I'm gonna tell them both it was me that cooked up the whole thing. You don't have to do that. Well, I want to. I want to set things right with them. I want to set things right with you, too. <laughs> 